You'll probably recall that to be a scientific hypothesis, a statement needs to make a prediction, an educated guess, and be both testable and falsifiable. But there's a bit more to hypotheses than that. This video will focus on explaining three different types of research hypotheses and then mention some alternative terms loosely related to hypotheses that are often used in survey research. As you know, the entire research process revolves around hypotheses, in particular the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is what we are attempting to demonstrate or support. But we can break the alternative hypothesis down into three types, attributive, associative, and causal. And if you recall the three different types of knowledge, you'll see that there is a connection between the two. Attributive hypotheses correspond with descriptive knowledge, associative with predictive knowledge, and causal with causal understanding. Let's go into each in more detail. Perhaps the easiest of all of the hypotheses to understand is the attributive research hypothesis. You would hypothesize that a behavior exists that can be measured and which can be distinguished from other similar behaviors. You are looking for attributes. This would allow us to describe something, which is why it corresponds with descriptive knowledge. For example, we can hypothesize that most of the population has heard of Disneyland. The assumption is that knowledge of Disneyland exists, that we can measure it, perhaps by asking survey questions of the general population, and that knowledge of Disneyland is discrete and would not be confused with another concept. Another example is that Disneyland visitors are diverse in terms of demographics, such as sex, ethnicity, income levels, etc. We can do a survey of visitors asking demographic questions in our effort to support this attributive research hypothesis. Now let's consider this alternative attributive research hypothesis. Most of the population is ready to visit Disneyland. Okay, this meets the first criterion of a behavior existing, and perhaps the second, that it can be measured. But look at the term ready. What does that mean? Does it mean that they are ready as in able to visit Disneyland? or ready as in a state of mind. I think I'm always ready in terms of the state of mind to visit Disneyland, but I'm definitely not always ready in terms of ability. I may not be able to afford to go, nor may I have the time available to go. That means that readiness to visit Disneyland, as worded, can't be distinguished from other similar behaviors, making it a poor attributive hypothesis. The attributive research hypothesis is the most basic, because if we can't measure behavior and know what we've measured, then we won't be able to collect data, conduct analyses, look for relationships between behaviors, and so on. The easiest way to identify an attributive research hypothesis is to look at the number of variables involved, one. For the first hypothesis, the variable is knowledge of Disneyland. For the third, it is readiness to visit Disneyland. And even the second, although there may be many types of demographics, is really only looking at one variable. We aren't looking for any relationship or associations or correlations between two or more variables. To establish relationships between two variables, we would develop an associative research hypothesis. Now we are looking at two variables and the relationship between them. This type of hypothesis states that a relationship exists between two behaviors. The assumption is that once we know about one behavior, we will be able to predict the second behavior, which is why this type of hypothesis corresponds with predictive knowledge. For example, we can hypothesize that knowledge of Disneyland is associated with visiting Disneyland, or that income level is correlated with visiting Disneyland, or that people who live closer to Disneyland are more apt to visit Disneyland. Again, the assumption is that if I can find the patterns of relationship, I can predict or estimate or anticipate. Assuming my study supports these three associative hypotheses, if I know you are aware of Disneyland or have a certain income level or live in, say, Orange County, then I can predict that you have visited Disneyland at least one time in your life. But just as in the case with predictive knowledge, knowing that two behaviors are correlated with each other is a far cry from proving that they are causally related. I'm not sure that merely knowing about Disneyland, for example, actually causes someone to visit Disneyland. For that, we need to construct a causal research hypothesis. Not the hardest hypothesis to write, but definitely the most difficult to support. This also involves a relationship between two variables. 
but a causal research hypothesis states that one variable is causal behavior and the second is effect behavior. A causal hypothesis states that a difference in the amount or kind of one behavior causes differences in the amount or kind of the other behavior. For example, frequent exposure to Disneyland advertising results in increased attendance at the park. Or, an increase in consumer confidence translates into increased attendance at the park. Or, discount tickets for local residents produces an increase in the crowds at Disneyland. To support a causal hypothesis, you need to meet three criteria. First, you have to demonstrate that a statistical relationship exists between the two variables. Go back to the associative hypothesis. You have to prove association or correlation before you can even begin to investigate causation. Second, there must be a temporal precedence. Temporal means time, meaning that the cause must proceed or happen before the effect. If increased attendance happens before an increase in consumer confidence, for example, then the causal hypothesis isn't supported. And finally, you have to eliminate any alternative explanations, such as warmer than usual winter weather. Let's see if you can identify each type of research hypothesis. And for these examples, we'll move away from Disneyland and consider a more academic topic, homework and exam scores. For the first, I want to know if I can predict scores on exam one from performance on homework assignments, how many practice problems students completed. Would you classify this as attributive, associative, or causal? How about, I want to construct a score that reflects how well you did on the computational parts of your homework assignments. And I want to know whether I can improve your scores on exam one by grading and returning your homework assignments the next class period. How did you do? This is a one-page summary of the different types of hypotheses and the examples I gave. You can stop the video and study it if you want. I said I would refer to other terminology that could be used in research. We don't always formally spell out the research hypothesis, particularly in non-academic research. You'll recall that a layman's way to define a research hypothesis is an educated guess. Different but related terms you may hear are a research question or a research objective. A research question is a highly focused question that addresses one concept or one component of the hypothesis, while the hypothesis makes a prediction of what your research will show. A hypothesis, your educated guess, could be that more students have difficulty during finals week than at any other time. This hypothesis could be reworded as two or more research questions, such as, what are the most common difficulties students experience during finals week? And what are the most common difficulties students experience outside of finals week? You can think of a research question as a hypothesis in the form of a question. Now, a research objective communicates what the researcher plans to do, stated in a specific and measurable way. It can take the research question and convert it to identify obstacles students face when studying for and taking final exams, or determine if differences exist in the types of obstacles students face at different points in a semester. Research objectives help the researcher figure out what he or she is aiming to find at the end of the study. But remember, regardless of the terminology, research hypothesis, research questions, study objectives, study goals, you are testing hypotheses. You are guessing and testing the guesses. Outside of academia, we often use the term objectives. Under the topic of Disneyland, you could develop a number of study objectives, such as determine the potential effect of Disneyland's advertising, identify the demographics of Disneyland's visitors, determine which factors most likely influence attendance at Disneyland. Why don't you take a couple of moments and see if you can come up with more? Processing time, what are the three types of research hypotheses? Which of the types of research hypotheses is the most difficult to support? Can you come up with at least one research hypothesis for each type? This last one is important because you will need to develop research hypotheses, or in my class, research objectives for the research project you will be designing and implementing. And having a good research hypothesis or good research objectives is the first step in conducting good research.